my people Israel. Oh dear. Got it. Thank you. Thank and you. I just remembered to record. <laughs> so who could read uh, Matthew 2, 7 through 12? I can. Okay, Jeff. I can try it again. <laughs> then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. The word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. So Matthew 2, 1 through 12, which, as I said, we'll be hearing again. Hi, Michelle. Well, oh, maybe she can't hear us. We'll be hearing Matthew 2, 1 through 12 in church on Sunday. So God leads the Magi to Bethlehem in two ways. What are the two things? Maybe there are more, but I thought of two things that help to guide the Magi to Bethlehem. The star. Star star and the prophets the what was written yeah the prophecy what was written by the prophet so these guided them and brought light the star brought light literally and the prophet brings light you know by enlightening us how do they bring light to your life? So think about it for a minute or 30 seconds. How do the stars, the actual stars in the sky, bring light into your life, whatever kind of light you're thinking of? And how do the scriptures, especially the prophets, bring light into your life? The stars bring light in my life because, to me, um, everything else I can fathom, but I can't fathom space. I I can't I can't understand something that's endless, that 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 endless infinite infinite and yeah. so and so many different stars. Each star is a sun, and each star could have its own. Um, solar system. So it's a mystery, yeah. like, and it's it's a mystery, like like God is a mystery to me. The space and you could explain quantum physics to me, and I'd probably get a little bit, but I cannot get astronomy. <laughs> yeah, funny. yeah, I hear you. And how about the emotions? Like when we, I I realize more and more. It's funny. Facebook brings this to my attention because people will mention living in cities and not being able to see the stars. And we are so fortunate. We can see the stars. How do you feel when you go out on the deck and look at the sky or out in a field? And look at the I sky. think about like the, like the Magi, the ancient people, and when they looked up, what did they think? We have a little bit of knowledge, and I think you know um, we just 
came from outside. We were in the hot tub. But anyway, Orion sits right in front of us all the time. And I think about the whole story of Orion. And it's just kind of cool. You know, just but to fathom yeah. that whole idea. Brian and I try to remember, I try to remember um, in August to go out and lay out when the meteor shower is at its peak. And even if we don't see any shooting stars, just to lie out there and stare at the sky is, yeah. it's just incredible. It's amazing. And when you say like, people from the city that don't see the stars when when you have guests up and i'm sure all of us here have the same thing you have guests up and you go outside and they look up and they're like wow like that that's yeah. amazing that you can yeah. see all the, all the stars and i remember yeah. when i was in colorado in uh in the middle of the rockies and, and nothing around and and how much how much deeper the sky is there than it is even here and I, I i was on the phone with jill i said you can't believe what the sky looks like out here yeah oh. michelle can you hear us i can now i couldn't before <laughs> all right well good job you fixed it way to go welcome yes. thank you <laughs> we're just talking about the sky and the stars they're beautiful yeah so you know we're we're taught we're thinking about how amazing it is that the universe is huge <laughs> to put it mildly mm -hmm. um we can't really wrap our heads around it and it's so beautiful mysterious like god and what about the prophets when you read we haven't in our Bible studies, we haven't read a lot of prophecy, but we hear the prophets in church. Isaiah was a prophet, Jeremiah. What do you get when you read the prophets? How, how does that provide light for your lives? The prophets for me is it's um it's hard to it's hard to just know the prophets because they're predicting something that has happened before we were even alive so the the, the thing with prophecy and it, it's hard to have them in the oh my internet connection says it's unstable oh you might lose me can you guys hear me oh uh, i think i just got disconnected can you hear me oh. <laughs> my, my internet cut out all of a sudden everything oh, was God. frozen and i was like uh, <laughs> oh <laughs> i think that's me so if i go away again i'll come back as soon as i can um okay so uh i think jeff was saying when i cut out that prophecy is challenging because they're talking about things that happened back then and we weren't alive things that are about to happen which actually were about to happen was actually a few hundred years right but for us it, it's it's, it's someone that's talking yeah so we're yeah. we're reading what someone prophesied that already came true but it's all thousands of years ago yeah so. yeah yes um but the prophets so, were also a guiding light but they tried to guide the people yes to be right to do right to you know, here's, they didn't give them rules, essentially, but like, hey, you know what, you mess up, this is what you're going to face. So. Right. And God sent me yeah. to talk to you, to tell you to straighten up. Yeah. Mm hmm. A little bit of guidance. Never bad thing. Yes. <laughs> so. 
Go ahead. Whatever. I, I lost it down in the hole. <laughs> I wanted to hear what you were going to say about the prophet. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, Kathy. I I was down in a hole, and I was just curious to hear what you were going to say about about the prophets. Uh, okay. One and all. Yeah, her connection's not good. Well, we're going to touch on a prophet in a little bit. So, so um, now I'd like you to shift and think about King Herod. Kathy, we can't hear you. You're totally breaking up. So I want to shift us to thinking about King Herod. So King Herod tried to control the situation, right? Mm -hmm. How did it go for him? <laughs> How'd he do? Yeah, well, not yeah, good. not too well. So what does what does this say to us about? power and authority when I pers my personal um, I guess theology is I don't think of God as a micromanager like you know I don't think of God as trying to control or caring whether I have tea or coffee in the morning um, but something really important like the coming of the messiah um god is powerful and god steers things or tries to steer us anyway in the direction that we're supposed to go so how king herod was really really powerful he was king appointed by the roman empire he had a lot of people who worked for him he could do a lot of things but in this situation he didn't control things how did god work around king herod well king herod um was afraid of the Messiah because it, it was a threat to his power. Mm -hmm. God knows what's in his heart and he knows that he would do anything he could to keep the power that he had here on earth up to and including murdering all the children that were two years of age or younger. Um, to me, I mean, he was basically on the brink of a man bad man to be honest with oh. you and it was all over keeping yeah his reign was very sketchy when you look at Herod at that time his reign was extremely sketchy so any mm -hmm. threat to him or his power was really a problem. he had a lot of issues and a lot of problems outside yeah. of Jesus and the Messiah he was very paranoid was of... yep mm -hmm. yeah. so God really whack job God didn't control Herod because Herod didn't listen to God, right? Herod was not interested in right. following God, even though he was a Jew. So how did God thwart, how did God stop Herod from killing the Messiah? He always kept one step ahead of them. I think so. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think God knows what's going to happen. So mm -hmm. he had a plan, um, just like God has a plan for for everything and everybody. He, he had a plan. So the other thing that this scripture says to me is that God has a good plan, but the only people who can be part of the good plan 
in a positive way are the ones who will listen. So yeah. God was able to accomplish what God wanted to accomplish because of the people who actually would listen to God, who would try oh, to yeah. follow God. Because yeah. That, when, when you think literally of what the wise men did, I mean, to cross Herod was not a, not a very easy thing to probably do. No. Yeah. Um, it, it would kind of. Yeah. It, you're kind of signing a death sentence for yourself by not following Herod's orders. Mm hmm. Luckily, they didn't live in the area so they could get away. <laughs> yeah, they snuck away. A, it, I mean, in modern times, if you wanted to put it in modern times, that that would be like crossing the mob. Yeah. You know, or. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or an, a dictator. You know, Herod was basically a dictator. Yeah. Yep. So the Magi were from um, uh, Adam Hamilton says Persia, which is what's now Iran, modern day Iran. So they were from somewhere over near Tehran over by the Caspian Sea, which is, so if you, I looked at a map today. So if you look at Jerusalem, it's on the Mediterranean Sea or well near it, Israel is over by the Mediterranean Sea. And then east of Jerusalem and a little bit north is Babylon. And then further east from Babylon and further north is Tehran. So the Magi for, were from over that way, and um, they were Zoroastrian priests. There are still people who follow the teachings of Zoroaster, or the other name, because I was doing a little research today. Um, he's also called, he, he was also called Zarathustra. So there's a book called The Spoke there's Zarathustra. And that's who that was. Um, so they came, they were known for um, studying the stars and people who didn't understand their ways thought they were magicians. But because they studied the stars, they recognized this new star that came and led them to Bethlehem. So, um, Hamilton makes a point of talking about the importance of the fact that Jesus came to the shepherds and through a family like Mary and Joseph that was quite poor very poor, so poor that they couldn't afford um, an expensive sacrifice when they made their sacrifice. And that, Jesus, that, that God also made sure that the Messiah reached rich people like the Magi, who were wealthy, who brought really expensive gifts like gold and frankincense and myrrh. So Jesus came for everybody, the rich and the poor. And when the Magi came, those, um, they bowed before. Anointed. Go ahead. One of those gold, Frank, the, the frankincense or myrrh, one of those that they anoint the death. Yes. Myrrh, maybe, I think. Because I did, uh, it was something I was listening to a while ago, and they said this was the only child that was given the oil that would eventually you know, indicate his death. Oh, if you want to get that far into it. Yeah, it's almost like um, foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Hamilton also talked about how they called him Lord. This is the last name because we've been we've been looking at the names that people called Jesus 
and we call him Lord all the time in our prayers. So I'd love to hear kind of what that means to you. Like when you say, oh Lord, help me. Oh Lord, thank you. What does that word like, I don't know. How do you think about that word Lord? As compared to like almighty God, another word that we say a lot when we pray. I think for me, cause I didn't, me, I'm just learning the Bible compared to you guys knowing a lot more than I do. Now I really know what the word Lord means, who I'm talking to more so now. Yeah. You know? When you say Lord. Yeah. When I say Lord, I really know now. It has more meaning to me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get confused. I'm like, am I talking to God? Or am I talking to Jesus? But then I know I missed a class. So I do have another question to ask because I, when I missed one of the things, but I thought I read not in this chapter, not would have been two chapters ago. Uh huh. Way I read the book that they were saying that Jesus really was God in the human form. Yes. Did I read that correctly? You read that correctly. Yeah, that's the whole idea of incarnation, that God is a spirit, a powerful, uh, you know, being that's not normally like us with flesh and bones, mm -hmm. but God came down as Jesus in the form of a man and lived. So God is really Jesus. <laughs> God is Jesus. Jesus is God. Yeah. Okay. Which is so every year we, well, not church, all churches celebrate it, but every year in the calendar is Trinity Sunday which is the day okay. to celebrate the Father, God, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And one, every year when I'm preparing, the notes say the same thing. Do not try to explain how this works. <laughs> well, if you we read the book, do not it says understand. It, but... <laughs> but I don't know why you not taught that from the beginning. Well, I think, I mean, I, I've tried to say it, but pastors say a lot of things. So it's easy to, <laughs> it's easy to miss a few, but yeah, Jesus. So the idea of how Jesus was born is that, um, God's spirit rested on Mary and she became pregnant and that the child was God in human form and is God in human form now because Jesus died, but Jesus was resurrected and Jesus is still alive in whatever form heavenly beings are in with God so at God's right hand. Jesus went up on the mountain to talk to God. He was really just going up there to figure out what was going on. Well, I, mm, yeah, see, this is the, this, the my, so Jesus, the, so the idea is that Jesus was fully, completely human. So Jesus yeah. didn't know everything as Jesus. His, his knowledge was limited to what God revealed to him as a man. But his spirit <laughs> was God's spirit. You know, it's one of those things where this is one of the very few things that I don't agree with in the in the Methodist religion because I don't believe that God and Jesus are the same person, and it's okay to believe that. I I because that's my personal belief, mm -hmm. and uh, and how you even people who believe that god and jesus are one and this are two persons but this two two manifestations of the same being 
have a hard time explaining how that actually works. How does that actually work? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I can explain how I think about it, but it's probably not church dogma. So, Don't be as a United... A lot. What's that? <laughs> Don't be talking about it a lot. <laughs> I mean, I there there have been arguments about how this works and what it really means since the day Jesus was proclaimed the Messiah. And then we were all told, it's, don't try to figure it out because it's way beyond what your mental capa capacity is as a human being. Brand. Yeah. So, you know, if God can be all things, if God is infinite spirit then god could certainly be a man by limiting himself and so one way, i've been through a lot of Catholic college and when they say the like the word the word that comes out of your mouth is part of you it's part of who you are so the word became flesh and that's what was kind of put to us when we were in school the word that you say you speak and god can do this he can make his word become flesh and that's you know, yeah. literally take the way they say it and the way even Hamilton explains it, the word, you know, that's part of you, but it's flesh. It became out and your breath being the Holy Spirit becomes flesh as well. God can make anything exist. If God created the whole everything, then yeah, God can create anything. That's and kind if of Jesus how they is... which made sense to me, and that's how I am. Yeah. It all makes sense. You just don't everybody like has their own I think everybody has their own particular way of thinking about it I bet no two people think about it exactly the same way no. yeah. so and honestly does it matter like I think what matters you know this is the sort of people that ego, the sort of thing that egotistical church leaders like to argue about and insist that they're right and the other guy's wrong <laughs> but in the end that's not really what we're supposed to focus on we're supposed to focus on trying to be like jesus right and so if we say that we are following jesus and trying to be like jesus that's what matters i think That's in my humble opinion was that jeff <laughs> that's 100 percent correct because right sometimes i can't figure it out when when christians can't get along with other christians and then we're supposed to go out in the world and try to convert people into christianity when we can't even get along with each other right we argue with one another so right yeah Our exactly mm-hmm we're a lot better at disagreeing than, <laughs> than agreeing. So when we say, sorry, I got um, off track. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I'm glad that we maybe cleared that up for you. <laughs> Jesus is God, as far as the Methodist church teaches, but don't <laughs> ask Jeff about it because he doesn't agree. <laughs> one but they do say three persons in one so <laughs> jesus and god are god the father and jesus and the holy mm -hmm. spirit are separate beings somehow but all god still yeah some somebody mm -hmm. once explained it to me as um i'm kathy Pastor Kathy. I'm also Kathy Wilcox, Mrs. Wilcox. I'm also mom. I'm also my mother's daughter. So all those things are me, but I'm different when I'm sitting and talking to my mother than when I'm preaching a little bit. So 
we can think of it that way that god is the part of god that is father and creator jesus is the part that is known to us because he took human form and we can relate and try to do the things he did and the holy spirit is the part that communicates with us that john wesley called our conscience that tells us what good is and what bad is and don't do that and try harder to do this and things like that three different roles played by god in the story of our life so <laughs> Uh, where was I? What does it mean to you to call Jesus Lord? Or do you just say it kind of out of habit? Say that again, Pastor. Hmm? Say that again. We didn't hear you. Oh, you didn't hear me? What no. What does it mean to you when you say Jesus is Lord? I think of a Lord as someone who's in charge. He's the ruler and the guide and the, you know, Master. The we just finished game of thrones everybody was you know the lord the lord is in charge so essentially yep. giving him a title of honor and a title of you know you're in charge let me know what to do the authority yeah right that's right yep. what did uh, you say Martha? the master the lord is the master the master there yep. you go yeah mm -hmm. yep exactly yep the master of our lives if we allow him to be and so the magi brought treasures to the lord on his birthday what is the greatest treasure that you give to jesus yourself your love yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yourself your love your obedience on a good day <laughs> speaking for myself <laughs> so i think i heard my cat crying so while i go find him i'm not sure where he is i think he might be outside could somebody find isaiah 60 and read one through six isaiah 60 one through six Good to go away, Martha. I'm trying to get there. Take right. your time. She did say 60, right? 60. Yeah. Six zero or five zero? Six zero. Okay. And one through six. Yep. Arise, Juice Jerusalem. Let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Look and see, for everyone is coming home. Your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried home. Your eyes will shine and your heart will thrill with joy for merchants from around the world will come to you. They will bring you the wealth of many lands. 
vast caravans of camels will converge on you, camels of Midian and Epith. The people of Sheba will bring gold and frankincense and will come worshiping the Lord. I mean about how they take different verses and then plunk them back in later. Thank you, Martha. You're welcome. Literally. Yeah, so here we have the image of the of the rulers coming on camels and bringing frankincense and what did what did it say gold and frankincense? Yep. Bringing treasures to the Lord. So we have called him in this book messiah anointed one king savior emmanuel word of god light and lord which one is your favorite which one means the most to you messiah anointed one king savior Emmanuel, Word of God, Light, and Lord. I think Messiah is my favorite. Why, Jeff? Messiah. Why do you like Messiah? To me, when I think of Messiah, I think of, I don't know, Messiah to me means a little bit higher than than um, a lord or a, a lord or a king also has like a human factor to it or messiah doesn't have that human factor to it yeah. you know much like like the light um or savior also doesn't really I guess have that human factor but yeah to be called a king, I mean, there already have been thousands of kings. Um, to be called a lord, there's already been millions of lords. But to me, there's mm -hmm. only been one Messiah. So. Yeah, I hear you. Anybody else? What's your favorite? I think that's part of the reason I choose Savior. Savior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I want to be saved. I, I like be... Savior also. Yeah, you want to be saved. In. Or, yeah, uh, at, like you are caring for your lovely cat. <laughs> yeah, pretty or soon cat. he'll start biting me. He wants me to give him more food. He doesn't like the food in his bowl. <laughs> he wants me to be his savior. <laughs> How about you, Michelle? What's your favorite? I like Savior and Emmanuel. Savior and Emmanuel. Mm hmm. Like and Kathy, I'm going with Messiah. I echo Jeff's comment. Yep, everybody wants to be saved. And I like Emmanuel, God with us. I, I, yeah. I, li I like to know that my Savior is right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes we may think about one of those titles more than another because of our situation. You know, he Savior may be the thing we need in the moment at one time, or if we're feeling confused, we may feel like we need Jesus to be the word for us to give us wisdom, help and, and guide us. So there's a quote in the leader guide that I wanted to read to you. It's, it's on page 146 in the book. In our world, you're either bringing darkness or light. By your words and deeds, you can bring joy, love and hope to others or you take it away. You bless and build up, or you tear down and hurt. Life is either all about you, or it's about others. Yeah. 
What do you think of that statement? I couldn't hear you, Kathy. I did not say anything. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would imagine that that is a great synopsis of most human beings that we encounter. You're either one or the other or somewhere in between. And you just, some people are evil and some are great. And oh, just, a, it's a sampling of, of human of human society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People get here either or though. There's gray areas in your life. So many gray areas. Yeah, say a little bit more about that, Jill. Well, in some ways you can be very good in certain situations and in other situations things might not work out and you may not, you know, thus we're all broken. We have bad thoughts, we do bad things. You know, that's why Jesus was here to redeem and save us and say, well, it's okay, but try to do better next time. Or, you know, yeah. I do try. Yeah. But you're not, you're not a true bringer of light and hope. And, you know, you'd like to try to do that, but you can't always do that. Yep. I yeah. Think that's good, good many people, when you, when you think about all the people you know in life, when you look at them, you could either say, yeah, he's a bringer of good or... No, nah, he's kind of not a bringer of good. He's kind of more of a bringer of darkness. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, their general character leads yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you can be a, a person who brings darkness for a long, long time. And then, fortunately, change. Be changed. Yeah. And become a bringer of light. I think that's what we hope for. But yeah, I, I um, imagine that most of you are human like me and can have a morning where we're actually feeling like, wow, I think I'm really on track today. I'm my best self and Things are going so great. And then just like that, it can all go south. <laughs> and suddenly <laughs> I'm sitting thinking, oh gosh, how could I be such an idiot? <laughs> Why did I do that? That was not a good move. And that's being human, which is why what we need a soldier, know? as you all said. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Yeah. I said, how do you know how my yesterday went? <laughs> yeah. If we were all perfect, we wouldn't need a savior. I also um I got an implant on Tuesday. I had a tooth that was cracked that I had removed a couple months ago and got an implant. And so Tuesday and Wednesday I was sort of off just not you know not feeling awful it's not bad but not a hundred percent and i found myself thinking this is not like this is nothing i have a good really good dentist i have terrible teeth in the back of my mouth but he's taking care of me and i've got good insurance and i don't have to worry about paying for it and it's going to get better, but right now I've, I'm off and I feel grumpy and I'm having trouble doing stuff, but there are people who feel this way or worse every day, all the time. And for me, it was a reminder to cut people a little slack that you don't know what they're going through. Because when you feel sick, it's hard to be, it's hard to bring light to people. So. so, Pastor, how is the uh, staff at the dentist office? 
Oh, yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, okay, there are two lovely young women who work at my dentist. Yeah. I didn't see them when I was there on Tuesday. Oh. But oh, yes. They, they, yeah. they were there for the uh, follow up on the extraction. And it was a little rough. <laughs> They're good girls. They were great, but I, I got, I was, I was told shame, shame. I didn't use salt water and Listerine enough. <laughs> Hush. Our daughters were her and her partner work at Pastor Kathy's dentist. That's how we know. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and um, Lizzie, right? Yes, and Nicole's in the front office. And Nicole, yeah, and, Li and Lizzie came up to me and she goes, I think I know you. And I was looking at her, couldn't place her, and find and then she explained, and I was like, oh, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, Did, do you happen to know Jeff and Jill Tag? I said, oh, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, it was great. It was great. I think my husband's home from work. <laughs> hey, guys. Gunner, come. Come here. Good boy. Come here. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. He's allowed to come. Quiet. No, quiet. Come here. Quiet. 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 Good boys. Quiet. Hush. Quiet. All right, it is 728. I um, wanted to share with you just a reminder that Bethlehem is in the West Bank and things aren't going so well over there. Welcome home, Daddy. Granddaddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked up um, on the United Nations, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's the United Nations Center for um, Helping Refugees. Yeah, just for a few more minutes. And it said that there are currently 114 million refugees around the world, people who have been displaced from their country because of war or no food or dictator dictatorships and it's something that we should be prayerful about there are a lot of people who like jesus and mary and joseph had to leave their country um because their life was threatened so we often don't think of jesus as a refugee but he was for a little while and it's a situation that nobody wants to be in so as you say your prayers pray for the refugees around the world And the other thing I wanted to point out was that at the very back of the book, your book, not the leader guide, is, well, maybe not the very, very back, but on page 170, before the acknowledgments, is John Wesley's covenant prayer. We saw that. This is the prayer that I said on Sunday in a more modern language. Yep. And it's a prayer that Methodists have prayed for years, especially at the beginning of a new year. I do. So yeah. I recommend that you, that I'd, I'd like us to pray it together before we close. And I recommend that you remember that it's in this book and consider using it as a way to rededicate yourself to 
our Lord, Jesus. So if you've got your book on page 170, let's read it together. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to whom thou wilt, rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let, Let me be employed by thee, by thee or laid aside, laid aside for thee, for thee exalted, exalted for thee, for thee, or brought low. For thee. Let, me Let, me be full. Full. Let me be full. Let, Let me, me be empty. empty. Let, Let me have all things. things. Let, Let me have, have nothing. nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things, things to thy pleasure. pleasure. And disposal. And, disposal. and now, oh, glorious and blessed God, and blessed God, God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and Spirit, Holy Spirit thou, thou art mine, and, mine, and I am mine. mine. So, so be it. it. And the and covenant, the covenant which, which I have made, made on earth, earth let it be let ratified, it be ratified in, in heaven. heaven. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me in this Bible study. I really appreciated that you were willing to come on the ride with me because I wanted to do Bible study. And if I had tried to do it alone, I probably would have been a slacker. But because I knew that you were going to be here, I had to buckle down and do a little bit of work. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for I having us. Yes, Absolutely. always a pleasure. Thank you for teaching me about the three. <laughs> What's that? Thank you for teaching me about the three. <laughs> there you go, the three in one, the Trinity. <laughs> yeah. So have a great evening. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on the snow forecast. Oh yeah. And uh, figure out what we're supposed to do. Do you guys have we'll any opinions? I, I think we play it by ear. And if it's really bad, we could always regroup and, and jump back on the Zoom platform that we've used in the past. Yep. And there are a few people who don't Zoom, but um, most of them wouldn't come out if it was a bad storm anyway even if the rest of us decided we could get to yeah. church so, so i would say there's only one person who um wouldn't do zoom but might drive to church so yeah that's my thinking wait until saturday there's everything i've read on the national weather service site says that because of the way the air is moving and the you know everything this is really hard to predict they one one of the notes said yeah. they feel confident about the storm that's coming in a week. All the models say it's going to do the same thing, and the one that's coming on Saturday is still very um, uncertain. So they're not really sure what we're going to get. So we shall see. Jeff has talked to uh, Mike Wilson about plowing the church, and he will do it if needed. Okay, great. So. Yeah, so um, I'll reach out Saturday morning and see what we're going to do. The bulletin and my sermon are all... Know, know Sunday before 8.30, we're, we're good to go. There you go. Let you know Sunday before 8.30? Yeah. That's a little bit late notice. All right, seven thirty. We'll give you we'll give you seven thirty Sunday morning. You can make. And we have our emergency call list. And worst comes to worst, we all join Kathy G over at Lemon. <laughs> there will be a coffee pot brewing if we have uh, uh, service. You are a okay. saint. Can we show you one thing before we can go? I get a light. Got yeah. A front light. Though. We got a Christmas card from get a friend a of ours, light. and it's that's one of the most wonderful cards I ever saw. Right here is the flashlight, so oh, that'll do it. 
So hopefully you guys can see this Christmas card that we received. Oh, um, wow. Talk about 3D. Woo. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. I've seen them before, yes. not that one, though. Yeah, this is the most beautiful Christmas card. So I did want to get an opportunity. I forgot the other day last week to share it with you guys. But oh, yeah, wow. very nice. Gorgeous. Very nice. That's a keeper. It absolutely is. It will be going away with all my other goodies. Yeah, so. very nice. It's really got, it's a lot of in-depth in this. I mean, this, the layers and. Wow. wow. Beautiful. Anyway. All right, gang, have a good night. You, you too. also. Thank you. Be you. safe out there. You did a thing. You too. Bye. Bye, everybody.